Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here in Riga. You've had to wait for six years to come back. I've waited 45 years to come here for my first time. This morning, I'll be sharing a little bit about the work that you, our users, are doing to make the world and the European region a better place, as well as articulating some of the work that we, specifically at Esri Europe, are focused on. You are a force of power, a highly skilled community, transcending national and local government, infrastructure and engineering, natural resources and environmental conservation, technology, and more. You have unique foundations of knowledge and know-how and are a platform for collaboration, whereby sharing and learning, you are creative and solve problems. Indeed, just a moment ago in the little meet and greet, talking to the lady from Riga Heating, asking, what does she want to get out of this conference? And the answer was, I want to be able to level up what we're doing with GIS. That's the purpose. And this is needed because public administration, infrastructure, technology, and systems are becoming ever more interconnected. Indeed, your work with GIS is advancing society, the economy, and the environment in your region. Through GIS, you're able to foster an improved ability for understanding, for collaboration, and for decision-making that touches every agency and every discipline. And in this, we share a common goal of taking collective responsibility for creating the world that we want to see, just like it was portrayed in the opening video as well. And we're all aware of the strong forces driving change currently, where in so many ways there's a perfect storm taking place, with a combination of big data, AI, digital transformation, real-time, remote sensing technologies, and more. The list goes on. Each of these are rooted in technological, organizational, and geographical paradigms, influencing the innovations that are taking place and manifesting in a web GIS. So let's look at some of the examples of your work. In the domain of national government, critical functions such as land management, economic development, census mapping, healthcare, taxation, and sustainability planning all exist. You can see many of the examples on the slide here, much of it within the Baltics. In the lower center, is an example from the Center of Registers in Lithuania, who are experimenting with a new generation of 3D cadaster, managing and providing users with land restrictions data. The center has also created a lot of open data, facilitating a geospatial infrastructure, which is a key pattern that we're seeing increasingly taking place. 3D, as mentioned, is also an area of rapid uptake, this example from the Estonian Land Board shows how they are investing in the realm, seeking to improve data quality and support improved planning decisions for environmental analysis and crisis management as examples. Their visionary strategy includes technology for data acquisition, infrastructure and standards, and creating new processes for mapping, analysis, and visualization for publication through services. Not only will this initiative deliver a unified interface and experience, but switching to an open-ended IT solution is estimated to save hundreds of thousands of euros that can then be used to improve data and service quality. Now, with the political turbulence taking place in the world today, it feels like the need for public safety and national security have rarely been higher. You can see examples addressing flood risks and fire prevention, such as the State Fire and Rescue here in Latvia, who have modeled their risk assessment for 15 minutes from fire stations. With the war in Ukraine on the back of Russian aggression, you can see examples of assessing battle damage as well, as the poignant reminder of radiation sweeping over the Baltics from the Belarusian nuclear plant in the upper middle. And sometimes, a paper map is still the right tool, as you can see with Jens Stoltenberg of NATO flying over Turkey after earthquakes in last year. 
Now, in Germany, Rheinmetall, the major equipment manufacturer, has been enhancing the capabilities of the Panzer Grenadier armored vehicle in order to meet the requirement to maintain and share situational awareness in real time between multiple vehicles when the infantry sections are both mounted and dismounted, an integrated battlefield management system was created on ArcGIS runtime to network enable each vehicle. Real-time situational awareness is maintained with other friendly force or enemy force assets as shown on the map display, including on infantry handheld and heads-up displays, where data can be captured and added into the system and is shared across the network. Moving on to local government. Planning, collaboration, and engagement processes are rapidly evolving. Municipalities are realizing the potential of reality capture, going beyond the simple mesh when combining with GeoAI. For example, in Zurich, in the upper left, where they are programmatically extracting street parking trends. Whilst in The Hague, or in Vilnius, on the bottom, we're seeing their reality capture combined with other data sets, such as underground utilities and BIM to create digital twins. Much of this work also manifests in how to plan in a responsible and sustainable way. Looking at how the carbon budget is phased over the 20-year development cycle, such as in Aspen Zeestadt in Vienna, or through better simulating climate resiliency, as seen in Oslo and Göttingen in the upper middle. And in the neighboring Marupa municipality to where we are today, safety is a priority for their family and business-friendly environment. By leveraging ArcGIS tools, the small municipality can now perform rich analysis for data-driven decision-making, for example, where to locate extra surveillance cameras, combining inhabitant, police register, and public engagement survey data, they can identify the most suitable surveillance camera locations to improve citizen safety within the municipality. But Marupa municipality apply GIS tools not only when it comes to public safety, but GIS plays a crucial role in every field the municipality has to operate on as part of their journey to becoming a smart municipality. In the field of energy and utilities, network management remains a core use case. Here in Latvia, GASO in the center shows their gas supply interruption modeling tool that significantly improves network trace times and resolving outages. And below this, you can see ESO's digital twin of their network in Lithuania having recently gone live with Utility Network, and we'll hear more about that later. GIS is also playing a key role in understanding the potential of renewable energy, identifying the right sites, and ensuring their operational support. Another example is of a small water utility, but with big ambitions. Kretingos van Denis, based in Lithuania, found that the breadth of capabilities of the ArcGIS platform allows them to focus not only on network data collection, but also to digitize other day-to-day -day business processes into a single environment, enabling more efficient operations and a broader and more accurate assessment of their organization's performance. Moving on to AEC. Applications abound across buildings, transportation, and infrastructure developments at large. We are seeing GIS in use for asset monitoring, such as by Atiki Odos, the toll road around Athens, and for building maintenance, such as by Tallinn University in Estonia. But in Tallinn, as well as at ETH University in Zurich, pictured in the center, they're taking GIS indoors for a richer interaction with these built environments. And of course, 3D is playing a role too, 
where the integration of GIS and BIM comes to life and can further integrate reality capture data sets as seen by Madrid Airport with their LiDAR point cloud. And Rail Baltica locally is no doubt an infrastructure project all of you are familiar with, integrating the Baltics into the European rail network. By using ArcGIS with BIM and LiDAR, they not only monitor the status and progress of works, but also have the ability to monitor what is happening around them. ArcGIS also helps to create a visual representation of how Rail Baltica merges into cities. For example, different buildings, commercial or residential, are shown in different colors. BIM and LiDAR provides an opportunity to perform preliminary inspection and control of works, with the right side example showing the compliance of the BIM model on the installation of the soil layer on one of the access roads. The final category to touch on is around our natural capital. We are all acutely aware of the increasing climate crisis that we face, where the GIS platform is rich for climate analytics. Whether at a global scale by PwC or nationally by the Lithuanian Environment Protection Agency in the middle, who publish reports on water and air quality, flood hazard and risk maps. The Estonian Environment Agency also published information through an easy-to-consume easy story map collection. And in the lower left, you can see examples of apps from the Agricultural Data Center of Lithuania, who are testing innovative ways of processing data and exploring the use of AI. They are also actively employing drones and use site scan with their imagery data to manage their imagery data. A further example in this sector is that of Lithuanian institutions collaboratively leveraging GIS for forestry pest management. The State Forest Service, the Environmental Protection Inspectorate, and the Forest Inspectorates are sharing data on pest-infested areas, exchanging this and integrating into the inspectorate's dashboards, inviting the public to learn about and report on threats and organizing preventative measures. All of the examples we've seen are great work that many of you are doing today. And so we've seen more about this work and how GIS is evolving and innovating. And in Europe, this progress is underpinned by a vibrant community, all of you whom form part of today. The numbers on the slide speak for themselves that together make up for the largest geospatial ecosystem in the region, with over 2,500 passionate GIS professionals working across ESRI distributors and ESRI Inc. itself. GIS is truly a local business, and our footprint reflects this. There is also substantial domain expertise through the wide network of partners that support all facets of your business, Ivo was inviting you to meet with the partners exhibiting outside today. I can only encourage that you do that. Europe is also the destination of substantial investment in ESRI's R&D, where as a company, we invest over 30% of our revenues. We have seven different R&D sites in the region, covering location services, indoors, 3D, and imagery. Indeed, the blend of 3D and imagery is turning Europe into a center of excellence within ESRI for these technologies, with our lead product management and R&D spread across the region and being closer to where the action on a global scale is taking place. ESRI is also a mission-driven business, working in service to the region. We are committed to supporting the key institutions in the region, from the European Commission and agencies and much of the work they are doing, including around climate change and the Green Deal, through to education, where we provide our software for free to schools, 
as well as engaging with universities to upskill future generations of GIS experts. The shortage of a skilled workforce affects us all and when we seek to build up a Europe that is fit for the digital age. We are also committed to our disaster response program that has had a busy few years lately with the COVID pandemic and then more recently through the war on our European borders in Ukraine. And with the prevalence of ArcGIS across government and academic institutions, as well as the private sector, we recognize the necessity to build the system on strong foundations that also reflect European principles. Being open and interoperable is a key tenet to ArcGIS. Supporting directives and policies in Europe, such as FAIR principles, data spaces, and INSPIRE. At the same time, the need for security and privacy has never been greater. Going beyond our GDPR compliance, we have also publicly committed and are seeking to attain ISO 2701 certification in the coming months and to give you confidence that ArcGIS operates according to the leading privacy and security requirements. The next area I want to touch on with regards to ESRI's presence in Europe is around communities. We today are just one of those. And no one has all the answers, the experiences, or the knowledge. So we seek to create a vibrant community for our customers and our partners to share and collaborate with one another. Whether at local events, or regional events such as the recent infrastructure management and GIS conference that we held in Frankfurt that brought together 900 of Europe's leading utilities, AEC and transportation professionals, or online through the collaboration forums such as the ESRI community. Without too much of an effort, you can connect to a peer and learn and share from each other. We see that this is when the magic happens when groups of users are collaborating together, and we encourage you to continue to lean in as we are better together. Now, before handing over to the next speaker, there is one more thing I'd like to cover off that Oscar touched on. This year, there are remarkable anniversary milestones being achieved by each of our three distributors in the region. HNIT's 30, HNIT Baltic's 30th, Envirotech's 25th, and Alpha GIS's 20th. At Esri, we often talk about being in service to our users, and Linus was mentioning that earlier too. This culture carries across all of our distributors, and it's the relationships that have been developed with many of you over the years and indeed decades that has manifested in these milestone achievements. So my congratulations to our distributors in the region, but also my sincere thanks to all of you as our users. With that, thank you very much.